Welcome, my dear students of Class 9. This is Tele and Radio Tutoring from the Directorate of School Education, Nagaland. And today's topic is a new topic that is from our poetry section. The poem title is Peace. Peace. So you would find it on page 62. Page 62. And you will find that um, in this poem here, before we actually start on the poem, there is a warming up section. So I want you to uh, go through it along with me and then we would proceed on to the poem. So here it says, read this excerpt from Lata's diary, a young girl who wrote her diary from 1991 to 1993 during the Bosnian War. So it was, Monday, March 15, 1993, and it says, There are no trees to blossom and no birds, because the war has destroyed them as well. There is no sound of birds twittering in springtime. There aren't even any pigeons, the symbol of Sarajevo. No noisy children, no games. Even the children no longer seem like children. They've had their childhood, taken from them, and without that, they can't be children. It's as if Sarajevo is slowly dying, disappearing. Life is disappearing. So how can I feel spring, when spring is something that awakens life? And here, there is no life. Here, everything seems to have died. So that's what Latas reported in her diary about an event in the past that is during the war in Sarajevo. Now, that is the picture that we get. When there is no peace or when there is wartime, uh, we can understand from here that uh, there, are no there is no happiness. It's as though there is no spring and, or even if there is spring season, you cannot fully enjoy it. Everything looks deserted, destroyed and completely shaken out of its uh, surrounding environment for that matter. So that is the picture that we get. In if, so when there is war, there is no peace. That we can understand, you know, these two do not exist uh, in the same place. So that is in the opposite side of peace is war. So in war, that those are the pictures, those are the uh, things that you would go through or experience. So now in the uh, exercise here, maybe some of you are wondering how to go about with it. So the question says, Complete this web chart with the words that you associate with these situations. What you need to do is in the first web chart, you have one example there. When there is peace, there is progress. When there is peace, there is happiness and so on. You think up of words and fill up that chart. Then on the second chart, you have uh, destruction, the example of destruction. When there is war, what do we get? Uh, there is destruction, there are people who get hurt, uh, people died and so on. So the, the, if you brought these out in this manner, you would get a clear picture how important peace is. All right, how important peace is. And so now our topic is on peace. And the poem title is Peace. You would find that at the bottom of your page, you would find that it is written by an anonymous person. So when we say anonymous, which means we do not know the name, all right, the writer's name or the author's name in this case, someone who wants to be mysterious has written it without mentioning his name. Or we can also say that when we cannot really date it or trace the author, who the author is or the writer is, we use anonymous. So our author here is anonymous. Now, if you can follow me as when I read out the poem here, you can look down into your poem there. Peace. I'd like to build a world, a home, and furnish it with love. And furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to hold it in my hands and keep it company. I'd like to see the world for once, all standing hand in hand, and hear them echo through the hills, ah, peace, throughout the land. Last night, 
I had the strangest dream I ever had before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to end war and put it in a deed. I dreamed I saw a room somewhere, and the room was full of men and women, and the paper they were signing said, we'll never fight again. And when the paper was all signed and sealed, and a million copies made, there was cheering in the street, and grateful prayers indeed. I'd like to see the world for once, all standing hand in hand, and swords and guns and uniforms banned throughout the land. Last night, I had the strangest dream I ever had before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to end war and never fight like before. So that is written by an anonymous person and that is our poem there. Now let's quickly take a look at the footnote section. As you already know what is footnote, we would start with one that is furnish. Furnish here means stock. And in the second page, 63, you would find the footnote to deed here means a legal document, a legal document, all right? A record of document, we can also say. Then uh, number three, banned. Something not allowed by an official order. I think we are all aware of what that means here. And uh, those are the footnotes that we will find. And as we go on to the stanzas, we would be also learning more about some new words here. Now, let's take a look at the first stanza. In the first stanza, the poet begins. I here is the poet. The poet begins the poem with the line, I'd like to build a world a home, which means he is yearning, wishing to build the world a home. All right, and what is a home for us? A home is a happy place for many of us. So that's why a home is where there is togetherness, you know? So that's why he's saying that I want to build the world a home and furnish it and stock it or uh, 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 have all those furnitures eat with love and not just any kind of material furnitures here, but he wants to stock it with love. In other words, a home that is full of love. Grow apple trees and honeybees. Simple things like, I want to grow apple trees there in that home and maybe keep honeybees. And snow white turtle doves. Why snow white turtle doves? Because the poet is talking about here peace. He's talking about peace. I want everything to be peaceful, harmonious. Snow white turtle doves, which represents peace. And I'm sure you have a uh, you are familiar with the, some of the symbols of peace, uh, turtle doves or white color flag and so on. Those represent peace. So that's what he has there. Then the next stanza says, I'd like to teach the world to sing. He wanted to teach the world to sing and not just sing, but in perfect harmony. What is harmony? And what is harmony in music? When all the parts, uh, when all the parts are perfectly blended together, no particular part has uh, extra loud shrill voice, let's say, but it blends perfectly and makes it a very harmonious sound when, that, uh, when all the parts sing in harmony, together in other words. Then the, uh, that is what he's saying here, he wants to teach the world to sing in harmony, in harmony. I'd like to hold it in my arms and he wants to keep it close to him, in other words, hold it in my arms and keep it company, keep it close to him. He do not want peace to be somewhere else. He want peace to be with him, present with him. Then the next stanza, I'd like to see the world for once, all standing hand in hand. I need you to mark those two lines. We will be referring to that later on too. I'd like to see the world for once. He yearned or he longed. You know, when we are deeply longing or wishing for something, that's what we usually say. I want to see the world for once. Now, for once here is important. For a very long time now, we would, I'm sure we are aware that uh, the world is in chaos. The world is in a lot of troubles. And it is very rare for the world to come together in peace, all right? Not fighting each other, in other words. So that's why he said, he said that I'd like to see the world for once and st all standing hand in hand, which means togetherness, working together hand in hand. 
and hear them echo through the hills. In other words, this message of peace, he wants to hear it across the world, echo through the hills. Ah, peace throughout the land. And he wished that everyone would hold hands and take in the message that it is peace time and that everyone is happily saying, finally, since their wish has been fulfilled, they would be saying, ah, peace throughout the world. So that is what he is conveying here. The next stanza, last night I had the strangest dream. Now, this is a little different here in this stanza. We here in the first three stanzas, we learned that this is what he wished for. I wish I would uh, build a home for the world where I have stock all these furnitures and not just any furnitures, but love. I wish that people will hold hand together in peace, that I would teach them how to sing peacefully in harmony. And I wish people would uh, take in how nice it is to have peace and say, repeat, echo it throughout the land. That's what he's saying. But in the fourth stanza here, he is talking about a dream here. Last night I had the strangest dream. You might want to mark the word strangest. Why strange? We will find out. I ever had before. This dream is a very strange dream because he had never dreamt this dream before. I dreamt the world had all agreed. Now this is the strange thing. He dreamt that all the world, all the people in the world had agreed to end war and put it in a deed. Everyone agreed that we are not going to fight anymore. We are going to put an end to this war. We are not going to have any hatred anymore. And they decided to write it in a document and sealed it, all right? Which means a pact is being made here. A, a, a promise is being made, a deed here. I dreamt, next stanza, I dreamt, next stanza, I dreamt I saw a room somewhere and the room was full of men and women. And in that dream, following that stanza, in that dream he saw uh, men and women, which means all the people representing everyone, everyone signing a paper. And they were signing, what does the paper say? We'll never fight again. The paper that, the paper that they were signing was that we are never going to fight again. That's what is being written and that's what they were signing, which means they have promised, they have given the word that they are not going to fight anymore. And when the paper was all signed and sealed, a million copies made. So after the paper was being signed, a million copies were being made and it was distributed all over the world, which means the message was clear that it is peace time and that everyone is celebrating that. There was cheering in the street. So what happened when there is peace? There was cheering. Everyone is happy, shouting with joy. And grateful prayers indeed. Why grateful? Maybe perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, grateful because everyone is praying. Everyone is longing for peace, yearning for peace. And when that actually happened, they were very happy, grateful. And they were thanking that it is now peace time. So that's what you will find in that stanza. The next stanza says here, I'd like to see the world for once. I want to see the world for once. So this is his deep longing that he really want to see the poet, really want to see the world, at least for once, all standing hand in hand. Everyone harmoniously together and without any hatred, without any kind of conflicts, all right, without any kind of argument, agreeing on the same thing that yes, it is peace time and that yes, it is important to have peace and holding hands together, which means working out, working it out together, holding hands, standing together, you know, and swords and guns and uniforms banned throughout the land. No kinds of weapon that, that brings war, no kinds of weapon that destroys peace are being destroyed banned. It, uh, uh, it is being banned, which means it is no longer uh, decided to be put to use. So swords and guns and uniforms, this represents armies and armies in terms of wartime. So all these things were being banned. Any activities that has to do with war have been banned throughout the land. Last night I had the strangest dream. The poet repeat again. Remember, he, this is his deep longing. So he's saying that I wish, 
all right? I longed for that kind of a land. I longed for that kind of a home. How I wish that people would sing in harmony. How I wish that people would hold hands and work out their problems together. How I wish that weapons and guns are being banned. That is his wish. But we learned that from this line, we learned that it was only in his dream. So uh, he said that that is why it is very strange. Maybe perhaps the poet knows that it is impossible. Maybe the poet is losing faith that it is impossible not to have uh, uh, to bring peace. So that is why he's saying it's strange. But he, his hope is not that of a hopeless thing here. He really longed for it and he really believed that when there is peace, there would be no war. All right? When there is peace, there would be happiness, there would be togetherness, and so on. There would be harmony, and so on. So that's what he is trying to emphasize here. And here, that's why he said, I dreamt the world had all agreed to end war and never fight like before. So that was his beautiful dream. And uh, very quickly now, we would take a look at the summary here. The poet begins with the picture, a perfect picture of a home where everything is full of love and happiness. And then he continues on saying that I want to teach that is his deep longing for the world. I want to teach the world to love, to sing in harmony. And then he goes on and say that uh, he, he goes on and say that for once, he wants to hear everyone saying, ah, peace, and feel how nice it is to have peace in the world. But in the later part, we find that it was a dream. He said that it was a strange dream. Why strange? Because perhaps he's also, uh, he, he is also thinking, or maybe he knows that it would be very impossible, or it would, be, it would take a great deal of effort on the part of everyone to make that happen, peace throughout the land. So that's why he said it. it's very strange. And in that strange dream, he saw men and women, which means everyone in a room where they were signing a deed. And what does it say? It says that we are not going to fight anymore. And everyone was there. And after that paper was signed, they distributed it across the world and there was cheering. Everyone is happy, which means here, everyone is not just a poet, but everyone is longing for peace. All right? They want to put an end to war. So here, in, further on, we will find that in his dream, he find that even uh, uniforms, uh, guns, and swords, any weapon that brings uh, hatred or war are being banned. So that's what we find here. And that was his, uh, the picture of peace. All right? And uh, he later on, again in the last stanza, he emphasized that it was one of the strangest dreams. And we also, when we have such deep longing, we find it in our dream, you know, and it may not be real, but it also represents our deepest longing. So here, through that dream, the poet is also conveying that everyone, men and women, were also signing that paper, remember? So everyone is longing for peace. Everyone, not just men, not just women, but everyone in the world is longing for peace. So in that dream, what happened? We can also picture here, when, that was, when the deed was sealed, everyone is cheering. Remember the word says everyone, there was cheering in the, in the world. So everyone is longing for peace. That's what the poet is trying to convey here. So that is a brief summary of our poem there. Now, uh, I need you to turn to page 64 page 64 under uh, the appreciation section here. We would go through some poetic devices and we would find out more what kind of poetic devices we find in the poem there. So in the appreciation section, the first one we have is a metaphor. We have dealt with uh, a metaphor in our previous class that is Lord Allen's daughter. Uh, if you are not aware of it, go through it again. And uh, so here, a metaphor is, in your text, it says a figure of speech, which is more or less the same thing, poetic device, okay? So when we say poetic device, do not get confused thinking that it only has to do with, um, it only has to do with the poetry section. 
if you actually go through your other pro section, you would also have found a lot of poetic devices. So a poetic device is a tool that writers use to bring out, to drive home their point of view, all right? And not just to decorate it, to make it very uh, beautiful, but uh, they use it specifically to give uh, special messages to the readers. So that is a poetic device and here we have a metaphor. A metaphor is a figure of speech which uses, uh, which do not use like or as, unlike simile, but it compares things. So that, uh, it, to put it in a more clear way, uh, let's take this example. You can see me and you can hear me uh, through the radio or through your uh, television and so on, but we, uh, we are not present in the same uh, place here. So we can say, in order to uh, put that into a sentence, we can say that a glass wall is between us. You can see me, you can hear me, you can uh, see that what I am doing, what I'm saying, but you can see through that glass wall, let's say, but uh, we are literally not present in the same place. So that glass wall, when I say glass wall, that becomes a representation of that separation, all right, that barrier between us. So that glass wall becomes a metaphor here. So the poet had used a lot of metaphor in the poem as well. And one of the uh, important example that you find here in the poem here is the choir. He gives us the picture of a choir. I'd like to teach the world to sing in harmony. So he gives us the picture of a choir. And what does a choir do? A choir sings all the parts in harmony. If there is, if there is uh, one part which does not fulfill its, uh, sing, its part, uh, sing their parts well, if there is one part in a choir and if they do not sing their parts well, then the music is not harmonious, it is not balanced, you know? So he gives us that metaphor of a choir, singing together harmoniously. So that is one of the examples there. The next one that we need to look at is refrain. So what is a refrain? A refrain simply means repetition, all right? You, so you can write it down. Repeat or repetition. So when we were reading the um, poem here, we find certain lines being repeated. I'm sure you noticed that. And even in your hymnal uh, song books, you would find that uh, the, the chorus is being repeated, you know? So, or certain lines that are being repeated in a song is refrain. So likewise, in our poem here, some of the lines are being repeated. And I think I have asked you to underline one such line. If you can turn back the page to page 63, and in the third stanza, it says here, I'd like to see the world for once, all standing hand in hand. And then again, you will find that in the last second stanza, I'd like to see the world for once, all standing hand in hand. So this line is being repeated. Now the poet is not repeating this line just for the sake of it, but what does it do? Again, remember, poetic device is a tool. So he is trying to convey this message because he wants to put emphasis, stress. So a refrain, we use a refrain to put stress or emphasis. We want to lay stress or importance. We want to point out that this is important, all right? He really wishes it. In other words, it, it gives us the message that he's really deeply longing for peace. So that's why it is being repeated. So that is our refrain there. And the next point, you can uh, flip back the page. Uh, question number four is rhyming scheme. We have already done rhyming scheme, so I will not be uh, going through that again. You try, in, but you try to exercise it, all right? We always start with A and so on. So you try to exercise it in your uh, own text here, poem here. The next point here we have imagery, five, imagery. So what is imagery? Let's take the clue from imagine, all right? 
Now, but do not get confused. The poet is imagining. Don't get confused in that way. Imagery is a poetic device, again, a poetic device, which creates mental pictures, all right? It, which creates mental pictures. How does that happen? Mental pictures in the sense that the poet uses words to create a picture in our mind. See, when we were reading, I would like to see, uh, the poet said that he wants to furnish the home with love, so you can picture a happy home. You want, uh, he also pointed out people holding hands, so that is also an imaginary. We can already imagine in our mind uh, lots of people, everyone holding hands and uh, saying, ah, peace, throughout the land, happily and people cheering in the street, millions of copies being uh, sold and distributed. You can see that it has been uh, distributed in such a cheerful manner. So all these things are imagery. So you can point it out in that manner. And um, uh, examples such as guns and uh, swords, which are being banned, again, it also creates a picture representing army and war. So see, that's how the poet, simply by using words, is creating a mental pictures in our mind and we are able to understand the poem, read it and enjoy it and read it as though we are watching something that is being uh, uh, shown to us and that is the effect of imagery. And you will find that imagery is, like I said, when we say poetic device, do not get confused with thinking that it only has to do with poets. All right, or it only has to do with poem here. It has much more to do with even in other writing sections, such as your prose. For instance, I'll just give out an example here. In our previous class, that is Rip Van Winkle. Remember when he was climbing up, uh, uh, climbing down the mountain, he heard somebody called him. But just before he heard somebody called him, he he saw a solitary crow, which means a single crow flying across the sky. So see, that is also creating us, uh, giving us a mental picture, you know, and um, if you really think about it, that is also foreshadowing. So for what is foreshadowing? Here we do not have a foreshadowing in our poem here, but um, since we have missed out on that one in, the, in our previous class, I'll just very quickly point it out. Foreshadowing, you would find it very useful when you write your story writing, okay? Uh, remember, we have also talked about how to go about with your story writing. So foreshadowing is important. It is a poetic device. As the name suggests, foreshadow, it helps us to predict the text, okay? What is going to happen? The story, the story, main storyline may be there, but certain things that tells us that uh, something terrible is going to happen. For instance, take the example of Lord Allen's daughter. The, the water rate was shrinking. That is the example that we get. So the water rate was shrinking. That gives us the picture that something terrible is going to happen to Lord Allen's daughter and uh, her lover. So that is foreshadowing. And in this case here, uh, we can also say, take the example of Rip Van Winkle again. When the solitary crow flew across, uh, we learned that something terrible is going to happen. You know, So that's how we can predict. And this is a very helpful tool, like I said, when you are going to write your story. In order to make your story very interesting, you can use this foreshadowing. In fact, if you, uh, I'm sure you know you are familiar with this kind of foreshadowing in movies and all. When the tension, the characters are in great tension, the music gets more shrill or uh, more uh, soft in that manner, it helps us predict the story. So likewise, you can also use these kind of devices. The whole point of explaining these poetic devices is for you to use it. So you can use it in your, where can you use it? You can use it in your story writing. You can also use it when you are trying some exercises on a rhyming scheme or trying to write a poetry for that matter and so on. So uh, try to use it. So today we have learned about peace, who, which is written by an anonymous writer. The theme of our poem here is all about peace. And it is about the poet's deep longing for peace. And he said that it, it was a strange dream, and in that strange dream, people were signing deeds, people were cheering, people were holding hands and celebrating the coming of peace. 
So to put it very short, you, uh, that is the theme of our uh, poem here. When there is no war, that is what we get. There is happiness across the world. So that is our poem there. And we have also learned about a few things about our poetic devices, such as a metaphor, a refrain. Remember, a refrain is a, repeat, a repetition to put emphasis into certain words or message. Uh, we have imagery. Imagery is creating mental pictures in our mind so that we get to uh, understand the full text better. Then we have foreshadowing which helps us to predict. Remember I was giving you um, some tips on how to go about with your reading. Well, even when you are reading, you would get a lot of foreshadowing. So when you get that, you are able to predict the text. Oh, I think the story is going to happen this way. The story is leading this way. So that's what you get to understand. So that is foreshadowing. So those are some of the points that we have discussed. And now, metaphor is all yours. Refrain is all yours. Imagery is all yours. Foreshadowing is all yours. Please make use of it. And with that, we would end, wind up our class for today. Thank you all very much for joining me.